for my first baking challenge of 2022. I am making the King Arthur Baking Company's recipe for English muffins. To make this recipe, you're gonna need milk, sugar, three tablespoons of butter, one egg that I've lightly beaten, yeast, I went ahead and bought the King Arthur brand of bread flour just to make sure I follow the recipe exactly. Semolina flour. Finally, you're gonna need some salt. Hi, welcome to my vlog. I was thinking it'd be kind of fun in the year 2022 to kind of incorporate my vlog with my blog. Last year in 2021, every month I would do a baking challenge and now that I've done a vlog, I'm gonna have a little bit of a channel going I just thought it'd be kind of fun to kind of chronicle this whole process in this way as well. If you haven't already, like and subscribe to my channel. I feel very silly saying that, but I guess on YouTube you gotta say that. Now that you saw all the ingredients that goes into this, I get to start making English muffins. So first I already weighed out my flour. I have this escali. Um, scale that my friend Meredith got for me. Shout out to Meredith. This has been such a lifesaver in so many ways. Then you need, I need to heat up my milk because it's supposed to be lukewarm. I don't know how long, but I'll just try it. Oh, nope, 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 nope. Okay, so now I have. My milk is all lukewarm, I microwaved it. I just add all the ingredients except for the semolina flour in with the bread flour. I'm adding the softened butter. Then you add, you can add the egg. Add in two tablespoons of sugar, one and a half teaspoons of salt. One two teaspoons of your instant yeast. So those are all the ingredients in the bowl. I do not have a standing mixer. The recipe, one of the questions that was asked was actually, thankfully, what do you do if you don't have a mixing bowl with like a dough hook? And you just have to hand whip it for like seven to eight minutes to get the dough to be the way that you need it to be. So, wish me luck. <laughs> I'm going to be getting some extra muscles from whipping this dough. This is what it looks like now. I'll let you know what it looks like in a couple, couple minutes. I got so hot, I had to take off my sweatshirt because um, it really was quite a workout to get my dough to what I'm hoping is the right consistency. At this stage, I'm putting it into a clear bowl so I can see and watch it. Um, while it proves. Okay, I'm gonna scrape it into here and then shape it into the ball. In the comments below, tell me all the stuff I did wrong. <laughs> uh, but also know that I am just an amateur, just trying to learn. Here we go. That is how full it is now. And in about an hour and a half to like two hours, we'll see if it doubles. The next step is to prepare your griddle. I do not have a griddle, so I am using this pan. And the recipe said that if it's not a seasoned pan, to spray it with oil. I'm using this oil. Probably not the best since it's canola, but it's all I got. There we go. And then the semolina flour. Set on line, sprinkle it with a heavy layer of semolina flour. So I'm just gonna fill it, fill the whole pan. I'm gonna get a little one, two, shake. Oh crap. Well, <laughs> I need to clean my counter, but that's okay. It's a moment of truth. I'm a little nervous. Ah! Oh my gosh, it looks so good. Oh, it's so exciting. <gasps> yes! 
It's doubled in size. I think I mixed it right. Yes! Here is a fun part. You deflate the dough, put your fingers into it. Oh my gosh, it feels so good. I'm so excited. So you deflate the dough and then I'll divide this into 16 pieces. How I plan to divide it into 16 even pieces is by using my scale. I'm going to measure how heavy this is and then put all of the dough into the bowl, see how many grams it is, divide the total amount up into 16, and that's how many grams I know that each English muffin should be. Two the bowl it goes. Holy smokes. Is that right? Look at that cute little baby doe. Oh, it's so cute. It's not baby. It's a mama. It's a mama doe. That weighs 1,026 grams. One of the things I need to buy is like one of those pastry cutters, but I don't have it. So I'm just going to use a massive knife. Ooh. So I'm going to try and get each ball to be about 64 grams. I'm just gonna weigh it out on my scale. See how much it is. How heavy it is. Oh, close. A little bit more. This could take a while. Ah! Perfect! Oh my god! Okay, oh my gosh. This is a moment that things feel exciting. Before it proves, I always get so anxious, but this feels good. Okay. So I am just making these into kind of balls. That is ball number one. You want them to be about three to three and a half inches across. And that looks like it's three inches. And then once you make the shape of your English muffin, you're gonna put it in the pan. Put like a piece of parchment paper on top. So there's one, two. There we go. I'll stay like this and proof for about 20 or so minutes. Okay, let's see what they look like. Perfect. A little bit more puffed up, which is exactly what we want. Okay, okay. so now is the part I've been most excited about making them. Like actually making English muffins. Let's see how it turns out. Okay, so you turn your heat on to medium low heat. You cook each side for about seven to eight minutes. They puffed up a lot. I'm gonna try and turn them over. <gasps> it's kind of looking right. It's kind of like pancakes. This is fascinating. It's so different than like a normal way of baking, you know? Making little, little, little pancake breads. I guess that's what an English muffin is. I did not know, oh God. Whoops, I got semolina all over the place. But they're starting to look, I think, great. Right. Then they should be at the internal temperature of 200. They're actually at 210, so I think this batch is good. Yes! It looks insane because the semolina flour burns, but the uh, artichoke red says it's fine. I am on the final three, which is very exciting. This pan is much better than this pan. This one takes forever. This one moves a lot faster. And because I'm a crazy person, I bake late at night. <laughs> Even though I meant to start at like four and it would have been okay. It would have been done by like midnight. I started much later than that. Here I am. Making homemade English muffins. I'm very excited to try them. They actually look like English muffins. It smells like red in here. It's gonna be good. It's gonna be good. Look at these beauties. I hope they taste like they should. Because look 
at that beautiful color on that. I mean, oh my God, did I make English muffins? I'm, I can't, it's late. It's way too late. I will show you the time, but I can't. I don't care, I have to try it with butter and the jelly that I bought, I have to. So I should probably not try this because it's too late, but I can't not. I'm so excited. I really wanna see how it looks like on the inside. So now, let me, let me do this. Let me try this out. Ah! So I'm gonna do what it says. You cut it open using a fork, not a knife, because if you use a f knife, then you don't get all the nooks and crannies. And I really hope mine have the nooks and crannies. Almost through it. Moment of truth. Let's see. Oh my god, I'm so excited. Oh my gosh. <gasps> I think these are nooks and crannies, kind of. It smells amazing. Now, taste test. Whoops. It's time for the Sarah's us. Orange apricot marmalade. And the butter I used was Kerrygold Irish butter. The moment of truth. The moment of truth. Oh my god. Let's see. Please taste good. Please taste good. Up close. Orange marmalade butter. Homemade English butter. It's like a new week mother to me. Challenge for January. Met and exceeded. Ah! I'm proud of myself. This was a long, this was a long one, but.